I'm here with Dr. Romano to do three comparison problems for the DAF. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgoman products and the author of the Dad Destroyer book. We want to go over with Professor Blois today problems on comparison. These are new type of questions that are now used on the DAT exam. So this is very important for you to be able to do these type of questions. In our new issue of the Math Destroyer, we got quite a lot of these questions that you can also practice on. All right, Professor, if you want to take a shot with us. Okay, Professor Blois here. I just want to read the preamble to each of these questions and to give you an idea of what you'll see on the test. This is the preamble to the comparison questions. In this question, compare the two quantities given using the information provided. If quantity A is larger, choose A. If quantity B is larger, choose B. If the two quantities are equal, choose C. If the relationship cannot be determined, choose D. All right, so let's go right into this problem right here, the first of these. Let's read it together. It takes six workers, 10 hours, to assemble four SUVs. A, the number of hours it will take five workers to assemble three SUVs, or B, eight hours. You know, this is the kind of problem where, you know, you can see it in high school and you say, shoot me now, right? Well, there's an easy way to approach this. Let's make a little table here. Let's figure this out logically. Six workers, 10 hours, four SUVs. Now, the approach we want to take, we want to find, we want to change six workers to five workers and four SUVs to three SUVs. How are we going to do that? Well, the, the technique I like to use is to oneify these two end expressions, the six workers and the four SUVs. There's no such word in the English language as oneify. We want to make these two things one. You'll see how. Okay, let's think this logically. If it takes six workers 10 hours, to do a job, how long would it take one worker? Well, it's going to take six times as long. It's going to take 60 hours to make those four SUVs, right? Okay, so one worker, 60 hours to make four SUVs. Now remember, we want to oneify that last expression also. So we want to make this one SUV, okay? So we have one worker and one SUV. If it takes one worker 60 hours to make four SUVs, well, how many hours would it take that one worker to make one SUV? Well, just divide by four. 60 divided by four is 15 hours. Not bad, right? Okay, so now we can look at ex uh, uh, expression A. How many hours will it take five workers? All right, what about five workers? Five workers, uh, let's keep it as one SUV. How long will it take five workers? Well, if it takes one worker 15 hours, five workers working simultaneously is gonna take five times less or only three hours. Okay, and I hope that makes sense. And now we wanna find out how long it will take these, uh, them to make three SUVs. Well, if it takes five workers uh, three hours to make one SUV, they have to do three times as much work to make three SUVs, so three times three hours is nine hours. So the value for A is nine hours, the value for B is eight hours. So according to our initial preamble here, if quantity A is larger, which it is, choose A. That's the answer to this question. All right, let's go on to the next question. A coin is flipped twice. Quantity A, the probability of getting two heads. Quantity B, the probability of getting a head and a, a tail and a head any order. All right, well, let's look at this. The probability of getting two heads is the probability of a head times the probability of a head. Okay, we're going to multiply because we want the two, uh, uh, the two outcomes to come uh, uh, one after the other. One, the probability is one half of the first head, one half of the second head, and therefore the probability of getting two heads is one out of four, one fourth. Okay, what about this? Getting a tail and a head in any order. All right, that means we want to get a probability of a head and a probability of a tail, or we have to consider two possibilities, that the head comes first and then the tail, or the tail comes first and then the head. All right, so the probability of heads times the probability of tails, that's going to be one-half times one-half. The or is going to turn into addition plus one-half. Probability of tails is one-half. Probability of heads is one-half. So it's one-fourth 
plus one fourth, and that's equal to two fourths or one half. So in this case, quantity B is larger, and if you remember the preamble, if quantity B is larger, choose B, and that's the solution in this case, quantity B. All right, now let's go to this third problem. Let's read it together. Working alone, Dave can clean 150 windows in 12 hours, while Jenny can clean 30 windows in four hours. Quantity A, working together the number of hours it will take both Dave and Jenny to clean 100 windows, and quantity B, five hours. All right, well, this is an, uh, a slightly more elaborate version of a combined work problem, and here's how to do it. Rem remember how to do the combined work problem? You have one over Dave's rate of work plus one over Jenny's rate of work equals one over the total time of work. This is only gonna be slightly more complicated. Okay, so let's do Dave's rate. We're gonna have uh, Dave's rate, Dave's rate, plus Jenny's rate, and since they're both working on a common project, it'll be the total rate. All right, so Dave can clean 150 windows in 12 hours. Okay, that's his rate of work. Jenny can clean 30 windows in four hours, okay? And now we want to know, question A here, how long will it take them to, to Dave and Jenny to clean 100 windows? Okay, so uh, the sum of that is going to be equal to 100 windows in T hours if they work together. How long will it take them to finish T hours? Well, look, the problem is over. This is the setup of the problem. All you have to do is turn the crank. So let's just simplify this expression. Um, let's see, we can multiply both sides of this equation by, let's see, the LCD is equal to 12T. So let's multiply each uh, term on each side of the equation by 12T, 12T, and 12T. And that's going to give us the 12s cancel out, and we're left with 150T. And then 4 goes into 12 three times. 3 times 30 is 90T. And on the right side, the T's cancel out. 12 times 100 is 12 times 100. All right, so 150 plus 90 is equal to 240, right? 240T equals 12 times 100. And therefore, T is equal to 12 times 100 divided by 240. So let's see, 12 goes into 24 twice. The zeros cancel over. 10 divided by 2, T is equal to 5 hours. Okay, we look at choice... Cho uh, all right, statement A is equal to five hours. Statement B is equal to five hours. If we look at the original statement of the problem, if the two quantities are equal, choose C. So in this case, the two quantities are equal, and we choose C. And there we are. Okay, <clears throat> I hope that gave you a good idea on how to do these problems. That was actually fabulous. Oh, um, unbelievably electrifying. Hopefully the students out there appreciate you as much as... We do here. Oh, um, practice these questions. Professor Blois has written up many, many other questions just like this in our new edition of the Math Destroyer. All right, good day to you. Bye-bye.